Nobody deceives like an addict. Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. Yesterday, day 78, was a day of hijinks, mischief, setups and spoofs all emanating, it would appear, from Chalet and Wells. Whatever Candace and Don were playing at, it appears to have backfired badly. In this episode, we'll review the call and also review how the setup panned out and then blew up. Meanwhile, what has this channel been emphasizing from the start about addicts? Now, before we get to the call, it's about 25 minutes long. The entire call was played on Unmasked, and I'll put a link to that in the description. I think we've got to talk about context. So before we get to the call, a bit of context. A YouTuber covering the Summer Wells case recently set up Grandma, right? And no matter how that came about, it put Don in an even worse light than he's been of late. In a, w- in a way, it may also put Candace in a bad light as well as Grandma, right? That video came out on Friday last week. So what are the chances the unwell stewed in it over the weekend and plotted sweet revenge, kicking off early this week? Well, if that's what happened, sweet revenge has gone sour real fast, hasn't it? Before we get to the rest of today's episode, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. You can click on the light blue icon on the bottom right of your screen, like, share, leave a comment, and let's get started. So in terms of the context, also worth mentioning, I think, is the fact that Candace was a no-show at yesterday's prayer vigil. I think it's the second time that she hasn't shown up. And there were actually quite a few people there. When all of this was happening, I did wonder whether Candace's non-appearance factored into all of that. Maybe it did. Maybe we were supposed to notice her not being there, and that was supposed to kickstart the rumor mill. It does feel like a lot of what has been happening of late is all about being about rumors and discrediting. I also think it's worth mentioning, remember Alison sketching a portrait way back when of sniping, backbiting, bickering and grudge matches that were taking place, you know, that she told us about kind of quite a long time ago. And although you can mention that sort of thing, what does that sort of thing look like? So we only really appreciated what she was saying then in theory. Well, isn't what we're seeing now, isn't this what we're seeing? It's that stuff in action, right? And now let's move on to the call. Now, I've got to put a little disclaimer here just to say the call itself is very hard to understand. Even Mary said so. I think everyone who's heard the call will agree with that. And you can listen to it yourself. What I've done is I've tried to transcribe it as best as I can. Not all of it because so much of it is garbled. But what, what one can certainly say is that it's very dramatic. It's very emotional. Um, It's very strange. So the recording kicks off at exactly 9.05 during the latest live from the Unmasked channel. And as I've said, you can head to the link in the description and listen to it yourself. Candace can be heard whimpering, sniveling, apparently crying, bawling. And a lot of that sort of overshadows, um, drowns out anything that she says. So you can't really often tell what she's saying, right? And so the other thing I think worth um, emphasizing that it does seem as though Candace calls Mary at about midnight on Monday. So Candace calls Don's stepsister and and suddenly sort of unloads this this whole drama onto her. And so Mary um, picks up the phone and says hello to kind of it doesn't uh, Candace doesn't say hi it's Candace. She you know, she calls and there's just whimpering and sniveling. And Mary says, hello. And Candace says something about you there. And Mary says, hey. And then there's more inaudible whimpering. Mary says, what's going on, Candace? Candace says, they just took Don away, right? That's very important to emphasize the very first words, the very first statement that Candace makes, which is, they just took Don away, right? Not the cops took them or 
you know, anyone else, they, they just took Don away. And what, what's quite important to bear in mind here is it does seem as though this is the main message that Candace wants to communicate, is that Don's gone, Don's disappeared. Don has been taken away against his wishes, against his will. Um, and and so at the end of this whole thing, the question kind of remains, where is Don, right? Because Don's Facebook seems to have disappeared. Uh, there's been no explanation on Candace and Candace Horror's Facebook about what has happened. All of this has been kind of put onto Mary, and, and Mary must now tell the story, right? So they just took Don away. Well, where is Don now? Apparently, he's not answering his calls. But the police also saying that they haven't arrested anyone. You know, that's the official police statement. They haven't made an arrest. So um, where is Don? Is this a precursor for Don kind of going on the run? What is going on? In any event, Candace distraught says, they just took Don away. Mary says, who did? Candace responds, the police. Mary says, they did? How come? Candace says, I don't know. And then there's these muffled sounds. She says, I think she said they didn't charge him with anything. And then they're flying him to Boston. That's the next part. And now that's where it sort of takes upon kind of a different layer is, is this the police or is it the mafia or is it got something to do with drugs? What is going on? Or, or, or you know, is it a scenario of the police working with certain characters or the other way around? Mary Incredulous says, they're flying him off to Boston. Candace responds, yeah. Um, none of this really passes the litmus test. None of it really makes sense. You know, if Don was being arrested, he would be arrested and, you know, it would all be playing out very likely in Tennessee, right? Um, or Utah. Candace says, yeah, Mary. My gosh, Candace, they didn't tell you why. Candace, who's wailing now, says no. Mary says, so what they do, they just knock on your door and come and cuffed him and took him? Candace says, yeah, and sniffles. Mary, oh my God, oh, I'm so sorry, Candace. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, I, I wish... I wish um, they could have told you the reason why. And so I think at this point, Mary is convinced by the emotion. Mary is um, thinking that this is real. This is for real. Candace, sounding forlorn, says, they didn't tell me anything. They just took, and it sounds like, took him away. And then the rest is garbled and you hear her sobbing. Mary goes on to say, oh, really? Wow, Candace, I'm really sorry. I'm so sorry, Candace. Candace responds by, well, just the sound of sobbing. Mary goes on, oh, my gosh, I'm so sorry, honey. I just, I feel so bad for you. I wish I was there. I wish I could hold you, Candace. Candace responds, the first part's muffled, and then she talks about him being the best father. Mary, now a little bit more cautious, responds just with one word, right, Candace more sobbing. Mary goes on to say, oh my gosh, Candace, I'm so sorry. Um, 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 they, they, so you don't think they're just going to take him for maybe a couple of days and release him? Candace says, I don't know. I don't think so. And so there's another sort of, I think, interesting insight into w what is possibly going on there. We can expect Don to be gone for more than a couple of days. Don isn't going to be released perhaps for a couple of days. That's certainly what's being suggested by Candace in this call. Mary says, you don't think so? Hmm, hmm. Well, Candace responds with something that's muffled. Mary says, you know, I don't know, Candace. They may just take him for a couple of hours. What Candace uh, says there is also muffled. So much of what Candace says is muffled after she makes her original statement. Mary says, well, why would they take him all the way to Boston? I mean, the only place he's ever been is like, Candace says a word that I think is federal. I could be wrong. She says, federal, that's all I know. Mary says, federal? And then there's more bawling in the background. Mary says, yeah, I don't know, Candace. I don't know what's going on. Candace, there's more garbled crying from her. And then Mary asks, is your, when is your mom coming back? Candace says, no. Mary, she's not? Um, and then also brought up, you know, at this point, I actually stopped transcribing just because it was so messy 
and chaotic um, and sort of clouded with emotion that you know sort of drowns out everything Candace says. Um, also brought up, Mary asks, did Donnie come into any money that you knew about? And so Candace responds, $80,000. Candace adds at about five minutes into the call, something about they're going to kill him. And there's a garbled reference here to a cartel. At about six minutes into the call, Mary asks, do you think he had something to do with Summer's disappearance, right? That is quite a, it sort of cuts through all of the, the gunk of the rest of the call. And at this point, which I think is quite interesting, at this point, Candace sounds more audible and coherent than anywhere else in the recording. And one does think that this is what this is all about. You know, th that is what this is all about, is who had something to do with Summer's disappearance. And is someone running interference? Is someone trying to muddy the waters, create confusion, cast shade, all that kind of thing? And, and yeah, Candace responds, as I say, very eloquently, very clearly, very coherently, in my heart, I don't. Do you think he had something to do with Summer's disappearance? In my heart, I don't. Not no. Not I don't think so. Not just a simple no, I don't think so. In my heart, I don't. She doesn't quite answer the question. Um, the Then let's go on to the emotion and just deal with that in a little bit more detail. Very little of factual substance is revealed in at least 10 minutes of garbled bawling. Basically, Don has been arrested, is being flown to Boston, and is apparently in mortal danger. All of that can be communicated in about 10 seconds. The spiel is emphasized with a huge amount of unintelligible bawling, which also allows Candace not to respond to specifics and essentially control the conversation. Essentially, what we're dealing with here is an extremely badly executed Patsy Ramsey ransom note, um, kind of overkill emotional emergency call, right? It's kind of the same thing, just executed really badly. And what Candace does is she uses the emotion to try to control the, the conversation and to force the other person into kind of believing her and, and taking her cue, the, the cue from these emotions. So even Mary, who took the call and knows Candace, admits that for the most part it was hard to understand what Candace was saying. The biggest revelation here, obviously, is an extremely emotional Candace. That's the revelation of this particular call. And, you know, compare that, this extremely emotional Candace, to a, the deadpan, blank, emotionless Candace during the Sermon on the Mount, right? The only thing that corresponds between the two is Candace actually doesn't give very much away, even though she's apparently demonstrating a lot of Im informa um, not information, emotion. She's, there's a lot of emotion. There's like um, the emotion is like overkill, but the information is drowned out by that. So it's kind of um, the same thing, except just with a lot of emotional noise instead of no emotions this time. And so one does have to ask, where were these tears when Summer disappeared? No one said anything about Candace being very emotional then. In fact, Alison said on the night Summer disappeared, she was, Candace was indoors and didn't want to talk to the police. And I think something about her wanting to get an early night so she'd be arrested for the polygraph. That doesn't sound like someone unhinged or someone out of control emotionally, does it? What about the prayer vigils? Where's Candace's emotion or appeal for help then? I mean, people are crying around her. People are crying out to God around her. And yet Candace is stoic. And so what is the bottom line? What is the bottom line to all of this? Well, you know, Mary was actually quite shaken by the call. She was so shaken that she actually went to the police, I think immediately, and only to find that none of it was real. You know, th that there was no arrest as far as the police were aware. It's been speculated that the call was a stunt, a prank, intended to put um, to be put up on the interview room, which has had its claws um, out for Don for a while now. 
And then once there, Don could come out and say, ta-da, none of that's true. Look, here I am. Don't believe everything you hear on YouTube. That's certainly what Chris McDonough has spe speculated about. In other words, was it all an elaborate ruse to discredit Chris McDonough and perhaps YouTube channels, some YouTube channels in general? If that was the plan, I'm not sure if it is a very good plan. What's the plan? Not a great plan. What they've done, I think, and this is just my opinion, is not only discredit themselves, but expose the lengths they'll go as a couple to cooperate in deception. So much energy and effort has gone into this, whereas their interest in searching for summer is lethargy by comparison. On day 79, the unwells have cried wolf, and we know how the, that story ends. To cry wolf means to raise a false alarm, to warn of a danger that doesn't really exist, to cry for help when you do not actually need help, to complain about something needlessly. Sometimes crying wolf causes a real danger to stir. Perhaps this will prod law enforcement into action. What do you guys think? I'm not going to take it further than that. I will tell you that there is an interesting postscript to this. While this cat chasing its tail drama is playing out on social media, there was a single breaking news story in the mainstream media from WJHL. This one, Summer Wells Reward Fund surpasses $38,000. I think the critical question to ask right now is where is Don? Remember, he was a fugitive once upon a time. If he hasn't been arrested and he hasn't gone to Boston, where is Don? Time will tell. Interesting things afoot on day 79. And, uh, you know, I'll obviously be providing rumor control and trying to provide the most authentic narrative in true crime on this particular case. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you guys next time.